Next item on the agenda is 2.03 hiring report, uh, Dr. Royster. Thank you, Mr. Meek. Uh, we traditionally have provided to the board a, a hiring report as we kind of culminate the hiring season. Uh, some years we've been able to get that completed and do the report in October. This year we're running a, a little bit behind with that, uh, but we do have that ready today. And it uh, is not only a report of, of hires and, and sort of the demographics around hiring, but also some other, I think, items of interest that are re related to hiring, but not necessarily simply a report of the demographics of the numbers. Uh, so I'll turn this over to Ms. Gibbs and let her present that report to you. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, the HR department has been supporting goal two of the strategic plan. Um, for last year, these are just some highlights um, from our HR department and how we have spent our time. We have continued for the second year to um, have year-round hiring of substitutes, which is a very necessary thing. Um, it's twofold, the need for substitutes, but it also has served as a good recruiting format. Um, I was looking at the board report um, that you'll get for the board um, this month, and a number of the teacher hires this month are coming coming from the substitute pool, where we've had teachers who've moved out of state or moved with a spouse, we were able to fill those jobs from people we've hired into the substitute pool. Um, last year, we had our largest number of new hires in the GATE program. We worked with the Greenville Drive and public education partners on the Teach 864 um, initiative to elevate and celebrate the teaching profession. Um, we've continued to work with Clemson on their Master Teacher Institute residency program. Uh, we had a summer recruiting event for the first time in several years at M.T. Anderson um, when we were approaching school uh, deadlines and we felt like we could benefit from bringing principals in who still had job openings. And I believe uh, the week before school opened, we only had five openings for teachers, which we ended up hiring soon after school to open, but were filled with certified subs. Uh, certainly one of the benefits we had this year was your decision to raise teacher pay to $40,000. And then our uh, four-day induction institute for new teachers and the two days for second-year teachers, I think has been a really big benefit for getting our teachers off to a good start. For this year, uh, a couple of things we have in the works. We, um, as part of our budget, included a Spark hiring tool, which is a video uh, tool that lets teachers record a video of themselves that we can attach to their applications, or we can also use it to interview people from out of state, from different parts of the country. Uh, we just completed the first uh, round of a new teacher survey um, with a company that we did an RFP for called Upbeat. Um, so we're anxious. We have them coming in next Monday to talk about the results of that survey. And their company is focused on teacher retention. So their survey is driven on what are those items that we can identify with our principals on helping us improve teacher retention. Um, we are certainly doing early hiring. Uh, Dr. Royster uh, told principals this past week at the principal meeting, if you know someone's leaving, you have permission to hire for next year. And as a matter of fact, I think we have between 20 and 25 <laughs> teachers under contract already for the 2021 school year. If we have been out and found people that we believe will be good, um, because everyone around us is doing those same things, we are offering open contracts, people moving to the area, um, people that we find. Um, we have also increased our support for alternative certification teachers. We see that number of people coming into teaching in a different way growing, so we've looked at ways to support those teachers uh, in a better way. And we have a pilot going on with teacher success coaches for induction teachers, first year teachers, where they have a person assigned to them that's coming in and working with them one-on-one -on -one in their classrooms. 
Um, so March 2nd, 2020 is our Shining Stars teacher recruiting event. Love to have you drop by that day at the uh, Greenville Convention Center if you're available. And since I did this presentation, uh, prepared it, last week we determined we would go ahead and have a January event on Saturday, January 25th. We will have a teacher recruiting event at Southside High School. Um, just trying to keep up with our competition in neighboring districts um, to make sure we're getting an early start on recruiting. Um, last year, our department processed 2,778 hires during the 2018-19 school year. Um, there used to be, we'd look for a time maybe that things slowed down. I don't really know that they slow down during the year um, with us hiring for substitutes and after school workers. Um, uh, it is kind of busy all year, not quite as busy as in the summer. Um, we managed 152 orientations. So every employee that's hired, whether you're an after school worker or an adjunct coach or a teacher or a principal, comes through an orientation session to learn more about the district and district policies and rules. Um, just some numbers on the number of transfers and separations. Uh, we received 43,602 applications online. And of those, 7,677 people applied for the first time to Greenville County Schools. Now, as you can imagine, a teacher can fill out an application and they might apply to 20, 25 jobs. So those numbers um, generate a lot of applications. Um, on average, we have about almost 300 people on medical leave or military leave, some type of leave every month. Um, we did 113 investigations or administrative leaves last year, and our employee relations representative had 224 contacts from employees who needed assistance or guidance on, on issues or concerns. Um, we processed 950 teachers to be recertified. Um, Teachers have to have their certificates renewed every five years, but a lot of the work to take that to the State Department of Ed is done internally within Greenville County Schools. We had 334 teachers who uh, upgraded their degrees, so from bachelor's to master's, master's to master's with 30, or to doctorate degrees. Um, one of our recruiters also works with approval of professional development courses that go toward that recertification. Um, so we had 2,067 of those courses approved. Um, we renewed 5,425 contracts. We placed 2,018 student teachers and 484 practicum students, which would be those students in their sophomore and junior years that are working um, to get time in classrooms. Um, we uh, conducted, we had 18 participants in our Crown Global in-depth interview training. We started this several years ago and all our principals and some assistant principals have been through that training. We continue to do quarterly training for all supervisors of hourly employees, and there are 200 or so of those supervisors. Um, so we do eight sessions a quarter, and I've listed some of the topics that we used last year. And in addition, um, probably five or six years ago, we started doing situational leadership training for assistants principals and principals. And that is when our HR staff goes in and takes example situations and works through how would you handle those situations in your school and really provides the um, legal kind of training that needs to go with how you handle those problems. On the hourly front, um, one of our big challenges uh, still continues to be hiring bus drivers, hiring custodians. Um, we had 11 events last year for 606 attendees. Each Friday when Lifelong Learning does the WIN testing, we have someone from HR there every week to help those people apply for a job. Um, and then we uh, started last year with a Lifelong Learning offering the WIN test one evening per month. Um, we used to have other options for people to go take the test. They could go to the unemployment office or um, now those places don't offer this test like uh, they did at one time. So we are trying to provide as many options as we can. 
Um, our recruiter in the hourly front goes to Goodwill. She po posts, posts flyers everywhere across the district. Um, she's worked with the South Carolina Department of Commerce and South Carolina Works to increase our applicant numbers. We've um, made some reach outs to veteran groups and we had some billboards which seemed to work really well for our job fairs. And then our principals help us by putting the events in their school messenger so that the parents of, employee, of students hear about our job fairs. Um, we actually advertised this summer at Hollywood 20 um, on the movie screens about our job fairs. Um, tried to track to see if that helped us get applicants. Our transportation folks um, were on your Carolina with Jack and is it Megan or whatever her name is now, uh, this year to talk about our need for bus drivers. Uh, we have started some partnerships with Voc Rehab to look at some employees that uh, might not traditionally have been looked at to be placed in our jobs. And that has involved some working with the regional career specialists and work-based learning to talk about how can we place some of our own students in some of our own jobs. Um, the Christmas parades have become a fun event for the bus centers and um, throwing out some candy and advertising that we have job openings. Um, and some of those, if you want to go to a touch a truck event, we have some buses and we each actually had uh, at some of the fall football games, we had our recruiter there. Um, and we have been participating in the next steps opportunity for our graduating seniors because there are students coming out of our high schools where a job with us is a good choice. Um, and then if we read anything about a business closing, then Vicki Sims, our recruiter, is going to go to that business even as a, a retail store. She's going to go visit and say, we have jobs. How can we help your people get applied with us? On the teacher side, uh, we have the Shining Stars event, which is our big recruiting event. We participated in SCOUT, which was an upstate district consortium to recruit together. And then uh, Ignite the Future is an event we host for our fall student teachers. We had gate information sessions and recruiting events. As you can imagine, when you are recruiting people for the gate program, you have to go different places than you do to traditional education programs. We post, hosted a PACE information and pre-service um, for those people looking at PACE as an alternative. We hosted uh, the Sarah South Carolina Teaching Fellows Annual Conference, um, which is a big way to get those people across the state into one of our schools and visible. And we've started working really closely with our teacher cadet programs in the high school. Mentioned before the Teach 864 event, and we're working with the International Cultural Exchange um, for some of our international teachers coming in, and I mentioned before the summer hiring event. Um, we also have used billboards um, for uh, in lo and local national publications. You'll see billboards about the GATE program. We actually did some billboard advertising in Charlotte um, to try to attract some teachers in North Carolina that might be teaching in North Carolina, um, but interested in moving to South Carolina. Um, there's a program called SC Create that provides some funding for teachers that maybe are elementary certified or middle level certified to become special ed certified. We had attended 25 in-state recruitment fairs and 28 out-of-state recruitment fairs. And the states we visited last year were Alabama, North Carolina, Missouri, Ohio, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Florida, Michigan, and New York. Uh, several of those states have a series of events where you can go like to Pennsylvania and spend a week, but go to multiple schools in that same week and it helps us go and use our dollars wisely. Um, we post on job boards and alumni boards, um, and we continue to look for networking and word of mouth. And we have, um, in times when we have uh, short-term needs or we've had difficulty finding, we have used proximity learning, which is a, a teleconference kind of classroom setting where the, the teacher, certified teacher, is sitting somewhere else, and we provide an aid in our classroom to support, and those students are, an example would be a math teacher while someone's out on maternity leave that we've used that for. 
Uh, we are continuing to work on building relationships, starting with teacher cadets and going through university programs all the way up until we hire um, students. If you, uh, the Greenville, the success of Greenville as a place to live, um, the success of our schools helps us in recruiting. And then we now have the new expressway to Tiger Town. So students who start within our schools and can get dual credit then can go to Greenville Tech, go on to Clemson, and then come back to work for us. Uh, on some statistics, uh, we had 17 uh, district appointments for principals, director, or district leadership. 29.4% um, of those were ethnically diverse. We had 19 new assistant principals, 21.1% of those were ethnically diverse. Three of those came from outside the district. And then I've uh, showed the statistics from the EEO5 report, which we report every two years to the government. It is not a reporting year, but we can run that report. And I've showed our percentages today are on 918 versus what they were for our 2018 report. Um, so we have uh, been able to maintain very closely or increase our percentage of minorities in these positions. And then I went ahead because we delayed this report. I showed last year's hires in terms of teachers and this year's. So last year, 14.6% of our teacher hires were diverse and this year, 15.2%. Um, I feel very good that we've been able to get this high percentage because we know that there's a smaller pool of applicants that fall into these categories. And then I've shown um, by gate, pace, the alternative programs, where are these people, um, how many have we hired last, for this year, and what percent diversity. So hiring from these programs has increased our diversity. For example, in GATE, it's a higher percentage of folks in GATE that are ethnically diverse. And this is kind of the percent of teachers that we've hired um, has increased every year um, over the, since 2012. What are we doing to address the teacher shortage? Um, early hiring, like I said, Dr. Royster gave principals permission. If you know someone's retiring or leaving, you can hire now. We are interviewing all student teachers, and if they are getting very good remarks um, where they're working, we are going ahead and offering contracts. We've expanded our recruiting efforts and offered more open contracts than we did in the past. Um, some candidates, aren't real thrilled about an open contract. They want to know which school am I going to work in rather than just signing a contract with Greenville County. Um, so that is a challenge we have to work around. Um, we are giving principals opportunities to help us recruit and go to recruiting events. The SC Create has been a great way to increase our special ed participants. Um, the district has provided some support um, with a test that's required for an elementary certified employee to become middle level certified. We talked a little bit about advertising and the Clemson program and the proximity learning in the earlier slides. The teacher cadets we are looking at as a key way to get to know those students early and encourage them um, to continue their education track and come back to work in Greenville. Um, our recruiters and HR staff are actively involved with education majors in the upstate at colleges and university. And then working with our international teachers with the cultural exchange programs that are available in Greenville to help them feel comfortable being in Greenville. Um, and then we have email list for all the teacher prep programs in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia that we are able to email directly all those students. And then our own, um, we have a Facebook page that is uh, Greenville County Schools HR Department. So you can see a lot of posts there about activities and things we are doing. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board members? We'll go with Ms. Glenda Morrison Fair. Thank you, Mr. Meeks. Thank you for this report. Um, who is exactly responsible for your training? You had a section in there where you were training. <clears throat> I'm not sure what page that was. I can find. 
real quick. Um, the, look, that train. So the Crown Global interview training is done by an, someone from Crown Global, and then we have done train the trainer with uh, Margaret Spivey and others in our HR department to be able to sup, do the second part of that training. Um, the leadership training for supervisors of hourly employees, that is done by Lavetta Williams, who's our HR manager for operations, along with one of our employee relations reps, or Myra Morant, who has helped some in that group, and Kaylee Brown, who is in the finance department under safety, has helped with that training. And then the situational leadership, um, we divide that up between myself, Margaret Spivey, and our employee relations representatives and Myra, and we take two of us at a time to go do that training. Okay, and also <clears throat> the teacher success coach pilot for induction teachers. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Okay. So that program is fall, right now is falling under academics. And Julie Woodhouse, who has been our mentor uh, person for first and second year teacher, is now working for Jeff McCoy. And they have hired uh, a number of people to go in and work several times a week with first year teachers. Um, some are retired teachers. Some are teachers who just left the classroom but only want to work part time. And so far, we're getting really good reviews um, from those people about the support they're getting. Okay. And let's see, I have two other questions. Uh, give me the times that you are um, recruiting at Sullivan Center. Did you say you were there weekly? We, we are there every Friday when they uh, do their, if you've scheduled, you have to call them and schedule to take that win test. And someone is there from HR every Friday after you take that test to help you apply. We also at the job fairs every month have a lab so you can apply. And then um, that evening class, once you take the evening class, we reach out to you to help you apply. And then the, uh, I said that our person was going to the Goodwill job fairs. So when Goodwill job, those job connection events every month, that we have a person there every time who can help people apply. You also can apply at any time at any of the bus centers okay. when someone is there. Okay, and one last question. Uh -huh. <clears throat> With all of your strategies, where have you had your greatest success? in your recruiting efforts? What, what area and what strategy have you had your greatest success? I think food service traditionally has uh, been steady in filling their jobs. I think part of the success there is their staffing levels along with HR uh, allows us to move quickly to get to applicants a little bit more so than in building services. But we are working on some things with building services to shift some work from building services to HR to hope to maybe duplicate that. Um, bus drivers is still just a constant battle <laughs> to uh, attract enough people um, from it. Because the training component, um, we are now working on uh, setting up some bus driver training in the evening, because we've always done that traditionally in the daytime. And we're going to be reaching out to our current employees that may work in food service and building services, aides and classrooms, to see if they might want a second job, if we can provide that training at night so that they're not away from their job. And the teacher recruitment? Um, I think the teacher recruiting, I wouldn't say one thing was more successful than another. I think what we've done is look at where we've been going out of state and tweaked where we go based on the number of people they have coming out of school and what their state looks like in terms of jobs opened. So we've taken some states off and added some states. We've had some success in Alabama. Um, people have been welcome to come to Greenville. Um, had a good visit there last week where they op offered three open contracts. Um, so just looking at where are those right fits that people might be attracted to Greenville. Thank you. Ms. Goodwin Caldwell. Thank you, Lynn, for this report. Um, I was looking at um, the percentages on some of your slides 
what is the difference between the percentage that you have on the slide for um, the hires and the EEO5 report? Because the percentages are not, for the, for the years are not the so same. The hires are just what do we hire for this school year. Of the 17 principals, directors, district leaders, five of those were diverse, and that's that percentage. The issue, the numbers at the bottom are for total district office officials and managers. That is a category on the EEO report that's required. We report every two years. I'm looking at your um, slide where it says the diversity hiring. Oh, okay. Um, this one. At, where it has the 2020 11.3 um, compared to um, the one that you have up there at 15.2 for 2019-20. You have 15.2 on that one. Right. If you go so, two slides down. So of the 88 teacher, of the 578 teachers we hired for this school year, 88 were diverse for 15.2%. Okay. of the hires. Okay, so the data from the EEO5 report is something different? Yeah, it's total employees. It's total, total employees. Total employees, right. So, so, so this that's report increased. for teachers for 2020, if you take all our teacher categories, our percent minority is 11.3% across the district in all teaching. Okay. I'm, I'm not understanding. Okay, I have a question about the the um, that master teacher program at Clemson. Are we still in the pilot year for that, Dr. Royster? Are you referencing the one for the uh, the teachers to finish their five year program with the masters, and they are assigned to a mentor teacher? Is that the one you're talking about? Well, it has it on here the teacher resident teacher yes. master. Yes, we're still in that. We're still in the pilot program because I know. I think they. I think Clemson still refers to it as a pilot because I'm not sure they've rolled it out beyond the original. Well, there's seven districts, where's Margaret? Seven districts, five districts. Yes, um, it, it, we're still continuing in that program. Um, I'm not sure, that, I think it's still in the pilot program. It depends on where they are in terms of the state board approving it as to whether or not it'll be a, a pilot or not. I'm not sure I reference it as a pilot, um, but we, the, we are still um, uh, hosting teacher residents and training master teachers for that program. I know when we first talked about it, you had said something about this might be a a start for other colleges to mm -hmm. have the same thing, and that's why I'm asking the question. The last conversation I had with the dean at Clemson about this in particular, I guess a couple of months ago, and I think it is still their desire to use that their model to expand it out to include other colleges. I'm not sure exactly where they stand on that because they have to get really when we refer to this as a model or a pilot, it's not really our model or pilot is Clemson's. Mm -hmm. And they have to go through the processes they go through with uh, Commission on Higher Education uh, to roll out something like that. Do we have any kind of relationship with the university center where they have a lot of colleges? We have a um, number of relationships as, with colleges that have a presence at the university center. As far yes. as I'm, I'm talking about, we, as we far get, as like a teacher program, oh something yeah, well, like uh, this. We get student teachers from every college that has a presence at the university center. That, that has a college of education. Okay. <laughs> Was their program approaching us? So to answer your question, is we have other colleges and universities that approach us with similar programs. Uh, USC has already approached us with the possibility of doing um, a, a a type of program that they would consider a residency model, um, but different. So each college has their nuance as to what they want to do with their program and what they can be approved. Education, just like we had to for Gate, they had to for their program, so they have to demonstrate a need and a process that the state board approves. So there are 
Clemson is sort of on the, I guess, the cutting edge for us here in the upstate, but there are a lot of other colleges and universities considering similar or other types of programs. Even They have even been approved now to host their own alternatives, but they have to make a case for it and have it approved by the State Board of Education. So we, we are in, we talk to those colleges and universities and provide our support and information when we can um, if we feel like they're going to be successful and help us to recruit. Okay. Um, Lynn, on your, um, one of the slides, it has um, American Board and Teachers of Tomorrow. What, what, are, what are those programs? Those are federal program, national programs that provide uh, non-traditionally certified teachers um, that they have a program in place similar to PACE for South Carolina where those people come in through those programs and get support from the American Board or Teachers of Tomorrow organization. So they're national alternative certification, certification. programs approved by the, our state department of education as appropriate um, programs from which we can hire alternatively certified teachers. Okay. So when you say an alternative, these it, are... It means you didn't go through a traditional education. You don't graduate with a degree in elementary ed. Right. You might graduate with a degree in something else, but it qualifies for you to get into this Teachers of Tomorrow program. So are these people um, also, they are able to work while they're going through this program? Yes, they, they, these are working full time for us under those programs, which the state allows us to hire them as teachers. Now, who train those people? Well, um, I, are well, they trained for example, through the district or no, through them? Well, so through them. So Teachers of Tomorrow and American Board would have their own training programs. Now, when they come to us, we're going to include them in learning things about the district. But the what we do for GATE people or the state does for PACE people, Teachers of Tomorrow and American Board would provide for those teachers. So you said that these are approved by the State Board yes. of Education. P okay. Pace and Kate are state operated. Gate we operate, and then those entities operate the other three. Probably the simplest way to look at them. Is Kate? Is that the career? Is the career tech that okay. we come out okay. of? A, I, I thought so. Yeah. It, that applies. That's applicable to some, but not all Kate teachers. Uh, some Kate teachers are required to have a college degree and a regular teaching certificate. Uh, the Kate category there generally refers to what years ago was known as uh, T and I teachers, trade and industry, mm -hmm. auto mechanics, auto body, uh, building trades, welding, those things that they, where they possess a particular technical skill that you ordinarily would not go to college to obtain. They have to pass a test, and then they're certified based on that test and their uh, work experience. Okay, what about the international teachers? These what, people what are, they come that? through an international company. There are several that are recognized by the state. It's considered a cultural exchange program that, again, is approved by our State Board of Education. And so they are, they are uh, <laughs> temporary, <laughs> somewhat temporary. So they're here mm -hmm. on uh, J-1 visa, and we use those when we cannot find other teachers for a particular area of certification when the job has been posted for quite some time. It's a three-year program for them. They work through a company and through the State Department. They're certified, trained. Uh, typically, those folks have teaching experience in their home countries, so they come to us as experienced professionals. Um, and they're here with us three years with the opportunity to extend um, uh, at one year at a time for an additional two years, but they can only be here for five years under that J-1 visa. I believe the majority of those we've used in years past have been at Blythe and the right, right. And largest number. For the, for the most part, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Lewis. Thanks. Uh, to, to just a few questions, um, and maybe we can start with some follow-ups to those questions. So, so international teachers, are they typically brought specifically to teach the language that is their native language is that is that why they're typically fine, but not always i mean we could have um 
an international teacher teaching elementary if that's what their certification is. And we, so, yeah. I would say typically they are the foreign language teachers. However, we do have some, we have math. Uh, occasionally we will have a special ed. Um, just depends on, on the need and, and who and who and what we can find at the time that we, we have that vacancy that needs to be filled and, and who is available. So do we, I, 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 I thought I heard you say mm -hmm. kind of those are filling spots that, that have been left unfilled. Right. So, I, <laughs> so we hire them. So we have several companies that we work with that are approved by the state. We, and we work with those that we find the teachers to be most successful and the most integrated into our Americanized system that can be successful. So the hope is they will be very successful. Um, we do... That is not the first go-to group that we seek employees for our vacancies, but they are where we end up going when we can't find them other routes. Okay. So, so they're, they're and we the and we have had traditionally some very successful people in those groups who then ended up um, but get getting getting uh, approved to work in the United States and stay um, after their program with international companies. Yeah, if they get here and they've been here for five years and they want to stay and they they truly become I, I can think in one case over the years we had one that a teacher that became the department head at their uh, at a high school and the school didn't want that person to leave so um, as long as the person is moving towards their own uh, visa or green card if you will um, and they are doing a great job for us we will to some degree help facilitate that, but that has to be something that they do on their own. Otherwise, at the end of the five years, they go back. Um, we do not, the, it, the State Department, State Board of Education does not see that as a permanent place, but only a cultural exchange, and that's pretty much how we view it, though we have found some exceptions. teachers who we have um, wanted to hang on to because they were such great teachers, and they did what they needed to do to stay in the U.S. Okay. So as far as international teachers go, do we have any sort of role in helping them find housing and coming out? Uh, the, their to companies and, provide a lot of that, but what we have found is that, uh, us following up and making sure they're getting acclimated to Greenville. Um, there are also organizations in Greenville that we can connect them with. Um, one of Margaret's recruiters has had several meetings for international teachers so they get to know each other so that they can be a support. But we're not paying their housing. We're not doing anything extra in terms of cost. And the, the company, you mean the, the company that we they used to help for, identify right. yeah. teachers? Can, can we just very briefly what the difference is between the GATE program and the PACE program? Between Kate and Gate. PACE? Kate would Gate be Kate. And PACE. With a G. Gate. G, Gate. Yes. Gate is our program. Yes. Um, and it has a more extensive um, training component, mm -hmm. in my opinion, than PACE. Mm -hmm. And then you work for us for two years mm -hmm. and you get a regular teaching certificate. Pace, you get a letter of eligibility, and after yeah. one year or two. There is, <laughs> yes, it, they're very similar programs. GATE is very much modeled after the PACE program, um, but the GATE is all of the training and the pedagogy and all of those things is, are done here in-house. Um, and there, there are some different entry requirements, but as far as... Uh, and, so the gate is a true cohort, cohort model. PACE is not a true cohort model, even though they are going through the program in cohorts. Um, but we control the quality of the gate participants and, and their, what they need, and we can modify if they need additional assistance, and we can back that off if they need less and sort of follow them throughout. Um, we're in a bit of a transition now in, in terms of the person that we hired last year, um, Candace Moore, who's working with the Karen Cap to look at the support that we provide the PACE. We're not required to do that. PACE is mostly an online program with a few meetings here and there, um, some in Columbia, some here in the upstate, and a lot of it is online. I do have a person in my office that works with those folks and keeps up with them and meets with them annually, but we do see a great need to provide them similar support that we provide for the gate, and I would say we see the need to provide that for all of those groups of teachers up, up there with potentially the ex 
exception of the international teachers. And uh, Karen Cap is uh, instrumental in that, and Candace Moore is the person we hired to do that, and we're looking at that each and every day and starting to build what would be a cohort model here in the Greenville that we in Greenville that we can support all of those folks um, in the fashion that we do the gate participants. So I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I, I also understood that one of the because there's that mentoring and kind of community group support being provided to gate that their success rate yes. is higher yes. than yes. pace. So in any of those situations, though, a first year teacher in say South Carolina would be in, in, in Greenville in particular would already have been assigned a mentor. They just wouldn't have the, the support team that we provide the gate people that we think we potentially. We're trying to plan to add for those pace people or expand the subject areas that we can do for GATE. So, thank you. Yes. That's a good thing. GATE and PACE also do not. PACE has a lot more subject areas that they cover than GATE covers right now. We have the ability to add on to GATE and we'll be adding on to that for next year. But PACE has different entry requirements and they also have more subject areas that we don't currently have for gates. So that's why we still have to use both, um, both programs. But if a, if a person in the community came to me and said, I'm thinking about going into teaching and I want to pursue one of the alternative certification programs, it sounds like the gate program is producing better outcomes than the PACE program. Yes, for those, those but people. right now that's math, science, and special ed, and foreign language. Not special ed, foreign language. Okay. The, the other question I have is just, um, so it, looking at one of the earlier slides, it, it lists the number of hires, and I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm reading it correctly. So um, on the processed hires slide, which I think was the second slide, it says, uh, up one more, up one more. Yeah. So 702 instructional processed hires. So, so do we read that to be there were 702 new hires in teaching jobs? Teaching, um, reading specialists, okay. guidance, media, all of those. So out of yeah, our entire district, we hired 702 new hires right. in teaching, mm -hmm. plus the number of teachers that transferred right. from it. Right. And a transfer, does that is that strictly a transfer within our district? Yes, or is that somebody that's within our district? district. So if somebody transferred from Anderson 5 no, to here. They would be a trans, they would be a new hire to us. They'd be a processed hire. Yeah. Okay. And we do a number of pass between us and Anderson, us and Spartanburg. We probably hire as many of their people and they hire some of ours. A lot of that's based on where people live and the point in their life. Um, you know, they don't want to commute. They maybe have kids that want to go to school where their kids go to school, that type of thing. So our, our entire district hired 702 instructional positions last year. Last year. That, that seems really low when we <laughs> talk about the number of teachers that we have. And I, I mean, what I mean is, well, what our is turnover our, is lower than the state average. What is, so how many open positions did we have? Well, we hired, I mean, we, we would have had to have 702 open positions. We would, well, some of those could have been added positions. Right. Um, some people were promoted, so that would have created a position. Okay. That's probably, yeah. That's probably one, maybe 100 more than we would normally hire, something like that. Which, which had to do with uh, first grade class size reduction uh, and not when it's 100 more we normally hire. Uh, class size reduction and uh, the change in the elementary factor from plus three to plus two, that would have generated most of that. And then probably next to that would be growth because we ended up growing about, about 1,200 almost I mean, almost 200 of which came from that closed charter school, 150 some odd, uh, which is a little more growth than we've been experiencing. We've been running about 1,000 for the last two years, and it was up a little bit this year. I do think we've had a slight uptick in number of retirements over the last few years with um, people reaching that retirement 
point. So when, when you look at the recruitment efforts for those 702, um, I know we've talked about a lot of work being done in state and a lot of work being out of state. How many of those 702 instructional positions came from outside of the state of South Carolina? I'd have to get that for you. I didn't do that as part of our presentation. Probably a smaller percentage. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know, maybe 100. Uh, we, we can get that for you, Derek. I, I, we are still predominantly recruiting, I would think, from in the state and from districts around us. Um, although we need every one of those people we hire from out of state to meet our needs. The other group that, that you brought up were bus drivers. Mm -hmm. I know that's that's one where even today we don't have enough drivers to to fulfill our, our routes. Do, do we have um, the same level of recruitment focus on going out and finding bus drivers as we have? I mean, it just it seems it seems odd to me that we have people leaving the state to go recruit teachers to come to South Carolina, but we don't have bus drivers and. Do we have people that are also actively trying to recruit people away from industry to come and be bus well, drivers for us? Well, I think there's two problems with that. It's a nine month a year job, barely. And the wages that we pay to get to top bus driver pay takes a number of years. So, you know, our entry pay, we've done a lot of work to get there. You'll probably see some further recommendations in the budget to look at that. But, you know, $15 an hour as starting pay is not competitive with local manufacturing for sure. Okay. Um, and if it takes 10 years to get the top pay, that is too long for that expansion for bus drivers. When I think last week I was in a meeting and they were talking about unemployment in Greenville was about 1.2%. So, I mean, everyone who wants to work is working <laughs> if you go anywhere. Um, fortunately for us, bus drivers is the one job you can opt out of the state retirement system. Where we're seeing that push on the custodial side is if they, they can't opt out. So if you make $12 an hour, you have to put 9% into your retirement from day one based on the local chamber survey on benefits. Most companies, you don't have to join day one. You might can join after a year and you might put whatever percent you want, but the max that you get matched is like 4%. So that is, that is a real detriment to us in the food service and building service side because once you get that first check with that 9% retirement contribution, then your $12 is not $12. And a lot of bus drivers do opt out because it might be a second career for them. So, so you expect a recommendation to increase bus driver pay? Or, or this, look at that schedule for the timing Possibly. We're looking at a number of things we might recommend in the budget to try to address the bus driver shortage. It is also reflective of, Lynn mentioned the local unemployment. There's a shortage estimated to be 60,000 CDL drivers nationally. So it's uh, scheduling, nine-month nine job, though we give them opportunities to work in the summer. What's really difficult is the schedule during the day, very early in the morning, very late in the afternoon. Uh, it, it is an ongoing challenge 
the only places that I'm aware of in our state where they're not having an issue are in more rural counties where they have very high unemployment and, and they've got a pool of, of people there to work. Uh, it's not generally a job that's going to attract people to move from, you know, outside of your geographic area. In fact, we, we even have challenges inside the county with people living in one area and a vacancy might be up in another bus area. So there, there are just a lot of challenges with that, and we're trying to work through what might be some additional opportunities that we might offer that would help to rectify that shortage. I just have one more question, but Objection, I've got four other speakers. We'll extend for 30 minutes. So I guess the last question I have was actually a question that Mr. Saylor's asked in an email. You know, that currently there is, there is both a cost for the driver and an aid. Um, and I think one of one of the questions he asked that since since we're talking about driver shortages is could we remove that cost of the aid and invest those dollars into the costs of the drivers? Would drivers be willing to drive a bus without an aid but make five dollars more an hour? I think those aids are predominantly all on special needs buses, so I don't believe we'd be able to remove those aids with the safety issues of those students. We don't, we don't currently employ, to my knowledge, any aides on a bus that aren't there for special needs students in, in written into their IEP. Uh, now, we may have some people, you may see a, bu a regular bus with a second adult on it, and that's going to be somebody in training to drive. So you, you might see a bus go by with a second adult on it. So the only Years ago, we did employ a few aides on routes where we had some disciplinary issues, substantive dis disciplinary issues. I don't think we have any of those right now. I'd have to check and make sure of that. Okay. So the only buses that currently have a second adult would be either AIDS because a child has needs that would require them to have support or someone who's in training. I mean, it's to, to the best of my not I think, I think they're all special needs right now. Okay. Yes, but I need to confirm that because in years past, and that's been a number of years ago, we did have a few in disciplinary okay. roles, but I don't think we do anymore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. O'Connor. Yes, um, first follow-up is to Mr. Lewis's um, questions about PACE versus GATE. Could you talk just a little bit about what those requirements are for entry into those programs? Mark, you may want to come up here to the... <laughs> Excuse come up here, Margaret. So that interrupt, but come up to the microphone so it can be recorded. Thank you. <laughs> Sit right. Record what you say. Yeah. Okay, so without having it all right here in front of me, basically you have to have a degree in a subject area that, uh, and have, I believe it's either 12 or 14 hours. Am I on? It's not. I'm sorry. Got to be solid red to be. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So you have to have a certain amount of credit hours, and I'm talking about gate now, in, um, you have to have a degree and then a number of credit hours in the subject that you're planning to teach. So right now it's math, science, foreign language. Uh, you also have to have a, I believe, uh, a definite GPA, and I don't remember. I want to say it's two point is it two. Uh, it's two higher than pace. Hi, yes. pace doesn't require a GPA. Gate does require a GPA, um, a, a minimum GPA. Two point uh, five, is it? So I think it's two point seven, 2 .7. but I, I would need to go back and look at my, okay. my information two. to make sure on that. So um, don't. Don't quote me on that, but PACE does not require a GPA. Um, when we started GATE, PACE required, GATE, GATE did not require any um, work experience uh, in the field that they were, their major, of the major. Uh, GATE, a PACE at the time we started GATE did require two years of experience, so that was one of the, um, uh, I guess, the separating factors there as well. And then PACE offers a lot more subject areas <laughs> Uh, than GATE offers at this moment in time. But at the time, that was building a program, capacity, 
um, and just the newness of running such a program through our district versus uh, relying on the state training to do that. So those are some of the, the, the major differences in terms of the entry requirements. So, gate, so do the, does sorry. the gate, excuse me, for the, um, if, if work experience is not a requirement. Work experience is not a requirement and of our yet gate. yet the campus. training they're getting here is, kind of offsets what the training requirement they may have had through PACE prior to getting here since they don't have as much right. training so, once so, here. Right, so currently. PACE um, Pace may have work experience in their field, but they, they would have no more teaching experience than anyone else. So the, in terms of a PACE, they have a pre-service. Well, GATE also has a pre-service, but the PACE pre-service is held elsewhere. Gate pre-service is held here in our, our district. And then and then we have ongoing training throughout the year where they have actual meetings and seminars and a support team that work with our gate candidates. The PACE, once they have completed their pre-service, they're really much pretty, they pretty much have been in the past on their own um, to follow up and take their courses, uh, which are generally uh, online. They, and meeting a few seminars throughout the year. So no real in-district training and support, just just the pre-service that gets them started. Does either set of teachers get certified at any point? Both sets of teachers are receive an initial critical needs certificate that allows them to teach while they work. Um, so that, that is the same. Uh, as it would be for any of the alternative programs. Are they having to study and prepare and do work to get that emergency certificate, or are they just given it by yeah, virtue not, of being in this program? They, they had, to, and I did leave out one of the criteria, they also have to t take and pass the practice exam in their content area, GATE does as well. So really, once they, they meet that criteria, then they, they are given a critical needs certificate. So for PACE, when they complete the pre-service and have the PACE, uh, the praxis exam um, taken, then, then they receive a critical needs certificate. Similar for our gate, they have to, they really meet it up front, um, and then we stay with them. But, but they go through that training, pass the praxis in their content area, and um, is the training like the training they would get for receiving teaching certification and throughout the year over the course of the years? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yes, but they never have to go back. They never have something. to go back. We, we are actually doing the pedagogy training here in the district, teaching them how to teach, how to do lesson plans, how to, um, you know, manage time. We uh, classroom classroom management, um, all kinds of things like that. We do have two courses that they have to take in their second year uh, to help them continue to prepare and those are, are definitely more education uh, teaching related than they are content related if that helps okay. um, same for the pace but the pace can take it any time during their four years that they're in the pace program they don't have a they're suggested to take it throughout but our our gate model actually requires them to take different things in it so that so that it is manageable and once, if they're successful, then they're in. They, once no they are successful, once they complete that, so our in, our gate teachers go through two induction contracts. So they're induction one, induction two, while they're doing their training. The third year that they are teaching is when they would actually go through their summative evaluation and have an annual contract. And in that third year, if they pass a depth, which they generally do, then they would get a professional certificate, um, just like any other teacher that had gone through a traditional program. Great. Thank you. Sure. And I've got a couple more. I don't know which okay. ones. We'll Go pretend. Ahead. We'll see. We'll leave Margaret sitting there just in case. Um, <laughs> one of the things um, I wanted to ask is what the rate for substitute pay is these days and if what the requirements are for substitutes to come in. Um, the certified rate is somewhere around $125 a day. I don't have that up in front of me. The non-certified is $87 and some cents, okay? Um, for certified, so if you have to hold a valid teaching certificate, um, and right now there is also, for the first time, a retiree teaching certificate that people have been able to get that qualifies them for that teaching certified pay, something new at the State Department. 
Okay. Non certified, we um, when we instituted hiring around the clock a year, they have to come to HR and be interviewed and screened to be selected um, as a non certified sub. Okay, and what kind of people are we attracting for $87 a day into that pool? Um, I, mean, I, I remember yeah. these numbers from. Well, what, 10 I years think, ago? Yeah, well, I think when I got here 12 years ago, the certified rate was 125, and then when we had the bad economy, we reduced it to 100. Um, so we're now back where we were. Um, we are getting primarily, I would say, parents. A lot of good volunteers in schools are the non-certified sub. We get uh, some people who've retired as aides.